Our next guests know a lot about Houston's blues history because they've all played a part in shaping it. Texas Johnny Brown was a studio musician at Duke Peacock Records during its heyday. He toured with Bobby Bland and Junior Parker as both guitarist and band leader. He also wrote the blues classic, Two Steps from the Blues, one of Bobby Bland's biggest hits. Calvin Owens is, Houston, is a Houston native who went on to great success, serving as musical director for B.B. King and eventually owner of his own production company and record label, that's Sawdust Alley Productions. Jewel Brown was born in the Third Ward and sang all over the world as the featured vocalist in Louis Armstrong's orchestra. And Trudy Lynn grew up in the Fifth Ward and started her musical career singing with Houston blues legend Albert Collins when she was still in high school. Besides being a roof-raising vocalist, she's also an accomplished songwriter. Everybody, welcome to The Connection. We have legends in the house tonight. Thank We're you. so glad Thank you guys you. could all be <laughs> here. Be here. Now, I just Thank used you. the word I hope you guys are all comfortable with, legend. <laughs> How comfortable are you with that? Well, I've paid my dues. Amen. I feel like I'm one. So you're okay <laughs> yeah. with that. Is that too big oh, of a yeah. word to carry for you guys? Mm -hmm. In any well, way? first of all, we've been here a pretty long time. time. We started pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> when, Show when, you right. <laughs> when we go through the book that Roger wrote and we talk to different people in Houston, we find out that each of you have been connected with some very strong names. Louis Armstrong, B.B. King. We didn't know all of that. Calvin, how did you make your connection with what we call the big? Well, uh... At the time, I was working at the, in 1950, I was working at the El Dorado Ballroom with the Plumas Davis Band. And I guess being one of the better trumpet players at that particular time, B.B. King needed a trumpet player. And so uh, they used to come by the El Dorado and, and catch the band. So I was offered the gig and right away. You were there? I was there. You were there. What about you? Well, uh... At the age of 12, they had me at the El Dorado with the Pluma Davis Band. That El Dorado, boy, it's in everybody's history. I used to walk from, my mother and I would walk from my home on Anita Street to there to work. And uh, that's when I met him, not really just knowing the guys, because I was all sheltered and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on stage, and then I was swept up corner. You know? <laughs> but uh, that's how I began to know all the guys and so forth, too. But at 12 years old, that was when uh, Fred Marshall had taken f over from uh, the Duprees. Yeah, well, what about Louis Armstrong? Well, uh, at the time that I had gotten with Louis Armstrong, I was working in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was for the... Uh, Jack Ruby fella. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot of history floating around. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had a slight disagreement, and mm -hmm. uh, I went on to work for another gentleman. <clears throat> and at this particular place, um, the uh, Associated Booking Cooperation Manager in Dallas, Mr. Tony Papa, uh, was quite uh, enthused about me and at the time Velma Milton had passed on and they were uh, wanting to put another singer with Louis but Louis at the time wasn't so sure he wanted another singer because he had bonded with Velma so much and you know it, he just didn't know if he was honoring her by putting another girl with the band and so forth but uh, after going through about uh, or say interviews or whatever have you uh, 500 singers uh, that's what I was told <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I was chosen the boys in the band say you know hey she's it Little did I know, and bam, there I was. Oh, my God. A blues <laughs> idol, American idol, you have nothing on this woman. <laughs> Texas Johnny Brown. Mm -hmm. yes. You were with the Peacock Records and all of Duke Peacock Records. That, that was really big. I was talking with the historian earlier. Uh -huh. He said, big impact on blues. Tell me about that history with you. Uh, the Peacock was... Uh, actually, with Duke. It was Duke. like mm -hmm. Duke and Peacock. Because I think Peacock, I, I think, was uh, trying to be spiritual. Okay. And the Duke was the blues part of it. Okay. You know? And I went through so many different phases there of, of getting there, you know, until it's just, it's not really easy to say just exactly how I got there because there was a lot of things like playing with different rounds with other people around the city and in and out like that. And before that, I was with uh, Amos Milborn way back in the day when we was CUNY home people, you know, and all that. <laughs> Also, during a time like when Calvin was uh, at the El Dorado, 
and it came along that I started working uh, Joe Scott. Joe Scott and I knew each other, you know. And he asked me to uh, to come by and, and do some stuff right because he he was an ear and all person and he did the writing out there. And so I would just go out there sometime and just be with him and we I'd just play things and he'd write them down and we just started out like that and he started writing tunes, you know. And we, Continued to do that for a long time. And thus we have the legend here after that little gets Yeah, he made it sound so easy. There, he did uh, this, I did that. <laughs> and then we have a legend here. Now, Trudy, yes. you started out, what, crawling and singing at the same time? I'm <laughs> 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 sure. Really, but you know, you know, with the El Dorado, I didn't, I didn't perform in El Dorado, but I went to there. I was in high school. And uh, we slipped off one night, my sisters and Tell I. Tell the and truth. <laughs> 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 and, you know, we went to see an Otis Turner orchestra was there when I came through there to see them, you know. But, you know, and um, I'd say the first, I got on bandstand with Albert Collins, which was in about 64. So I, I was a little bit behind them, but I know everybody, everybody talking about it because well, I was watching everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. I was grooming myself. All right, all right. <laughs> what is it about the blues that connects with everybody? I mean, you can have a person who listens to hip hop, they listen to country, they listen to rock, but they can also listen to blues and feel something and connect with it. Calvin, what is it? Because the blues is, is the birth of the all root. these other musics mm -hmm. that you hear today. The roots. So everything is gonna go right back to that. That's right. You got jazz, everything comes from gospel and blues. That's, That's where right. all the music comes from. Mm -hmm. That's right. That, we, that we are in today. That's right. What is it about I'll blues agree. that just gets down in your heart, though? Because I can be sitting around and we put on something, I'm, I lay back and I'm gone. I'm into it. I'm there. What is it? What, why does it put us in that mood? It's a melancholy mood. Mm -hmm. It's a melancholy mood. And the stories? You know, listen, people that say, what is the blues and how does it come up on you? But you know, it's it's one of these things. If if you are sitting, you can get thinking. You can start thinking about things that happened to you mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, thinking about, uh, hey, you might have a bad love affair. You know, and I say, well, I still feel so funny about this thing. That's blues. That's the blues. I know, think it's, it's more about life. Life, I life was it say itself. Life, yeah. life it's itself. Life. Because when you the blues, you touch. Everybody mm -hmm. right. with the happiness, the That's sadness, right. Right. The, all the other it's things my that life, go. Jewel's life, his life, your life, everybody's life. Every song tells something about everybody, and that's what makes you sit back and relax. And mm -hmm. the blues. Just like saying, here it is. And the blues is, you know is what I'm uh, <laughs> very true. That's right. Now, you, that's Trudy true. said that right before we started that's the right. show. She goes, we're here to tell the truth. And I didn't get it until, you know, you guys started talking mm -hmm. more. It is a mm -hmm. universal truth. It's mm -hmm. a universal truth. Well, in you rounding know. up everything, uh, my definition has always been uh, and especially in my day of coming up with the right songwriters and so forth, mm -hmm. it's like the gospel. It's mm -hmm. the truth. truth. Mm -hmm. It's the an expression. Truth. It's a feeling. Okay? Mm -hmm. And everybody understands mm -hmm. the blues. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands, but can anybody sing it? Oh, well, how can I want to know about that. Everybody, that everybody got part. a blues song to sing. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Everybody, everybody has feel a blues song sing. to sing. They they can can feel it. It. It's something to get to everybody. That's yeah. what it's about. Everybody got a blues song to sing. Yeah. Let me ask you guys this. I was talking earlier. Houston, I mean, when we sit around and we talk mm. with you guys, we see how rich we are with the history of the blues. Are we that recognized abroad? Do people know what we contribute from Houston to this genre called mm -hmm. the blues? I sometimes I think more so. More so? Oh, yeah. I really? think more so. I've had kids that have done a time overseas about 15 and 16 years old tell me things about I have to think about it. They ask me questions about myself. And I said, mm -hmm. How'd you God, know that? Wait a minute. Yeah, how do you know that? And let me think. Did I do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. But it's in the programs Things in the that schools is. over there. Because yeah, I've is. been over there and it went is. to yeah. the kids and, and we're talking to them over in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. With them, it's an it's art. art. It's an art. And, it's and an it's art. In the with departments them. in the school. And, uh, well, why haven't we? realize what we have and you know teach it to our own kids and appreciate that which we have here well we don't re really know the real value Jewel really no, wants to talk she's squeezing my leg over here the Galvestonian appreciate that good <laughs> beach what used to be a good <laughs> beach uh, <laughs> a man has no honor in his own yeah. home but that's you the know, way it I, is I had three I had three years of uh, that class in schools mm -hmm. blues in school mm -hmm. Uh, fourth grade kids 
that was the most interesting thing that I think I've ever been into during my whole career. The kids, you know, and it makes you feel so good. I made, I make this circle for kids for years, and you know when I go back, when you finally go back, and you walk in, and you can hear them say, "That Mr. Brown, that Mr. Brown," you know, and it was good. And it, they remembered things, you know, and we'd have a good talk and all and everything before doing a little teaching, and then I'd play things that we'd have a sing along. I'd have everybody sing it, you know, mm -hmm. and they, and if I missed it, they would, they would tell me, "Mr. Brown, let's do that sing along," you know, and. Get everybody going. That's the most interesting thing, though, man. That's true. That's true. This is good. I know we're, we don't have much time left, but I want to get each of you to tell me how important the blues has been in your life. Besides just singing it or writing the music, how else has it shaped your life? Kevin, we're going to start with you. Well, first of all, <laughs> the blues got me out of the alley. <laughs> but basically, the answer to your question, the blues have, I mean, provided a better way of life for me musically speaking and non musically speaking because the blues carried me all over the world That's right. I met a lot of people in my time I've done a lot of great projects in my lifetime be only because of the blues that I have my own uh, record label and my own production company today okay Jewel what's it done for you well it's been absolutely great to me for the simple reason that uh, I'm one of these people not ashamed when you call my name. Yeah, I come from very rural conditions. Mm -hmm. And I sang my way out of those conditions mm -hmm. for my mom and dad's sake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Same here, baby. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> church on this side of the room while yeah, she's preaching over here. Yeah, man. Yeah, you, Trudy. That's right. That's nice. Well, That's so true. far, I've enjoyed doing it. You know, and I've been all over the world singing. I mean, all over the world, and I've met a whole lot of different people. I've met uh, blues musicians that I didn't even know exist. You yeah. know, but when overseas. you meet them, there's it's automatically a connection. Oh, it's a connection because we all oh, are yeah. doing this, about the same thing, you know. And I've had the pleasure of writing, and I've had some artists to record my material, and I'm still writing, and I still want to go further in this. Oh, way to go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Right. Brown. That's as true. far as I can go. Just like myself, I've, I've been in this business so long until this, you know, with go so far. I'm not trying to sell CDs or anything like that now, but listen, it's, all right, though. it's a story. <laughs> oh, yeah. It really is. It is. Oh, yeah. But it's just, it's the, on, on one of my CDs is nothing but the truth. There you go. That, that, that title and that song on that, it starts off and it tells you where I come from. Mm -hmm. right. My dad was a blind person. And we used to do street corners. Some people call it panhandling. I don't care what you call it. Well, it got me to where I am yeah. today. You know, it, it was educational to me because I learned a lot there. And that's what it does for me now. It's educational for me now, you know, because I meet people and you meet all walks of life in this business here, you know? Mm -hmm. And it shapes you to who and how to meet people and what you put yourself into. Right, right. Yeah, and we do want to sell CDs. Mm -hmm. I must. Yeah. <laughs> I must but say I must that truth go again. on the computer and yeah. download no blues. Please don't do <laughs> us like that. Buy our music. <laughs> oh, I was never a hit record artist, uh, but I was a quite appreciated artist, especially throughout all foreign countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, in between times of traveling overseas, I just thought I would be home for my son's children's sake. I never didn't get a chance to raise him, but mom and dad did. So the least I can do is help him with his. So right. in the meantime, I'm in the insurance business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's one word that I think of when I think about the blues for myself. I'll just say grounding. It just grounds me right. to being on a solid foundation. And I know we're out of time, but I want one word, just one word from each person mm -hmm. about the blues. What is that word for you when you think of the blues? The truth. Life. The gospel. Gospel for me, too. And we've heard it from the legends. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Got to have you back again. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for the truth. Okay. When we come back, we'll find out how you can tune into the blues every week. The highlight was being able to have Coco Taylor, the queen of blues, come to Houston, Texas to headline the Willie Mae Big Mama Thornton Blues Festival. It was an 
a memorable moment. It was a wonderful night and uh, just a full weekend, but being able to have her come down and headline, a headline that festival was wonderful. Probably it would be three things, not just one, but uh, being recognized and called by name uh, by one of the females from the Uppity Blues Broad uh, group, Gay, and uh, being called by name by Luther Guitar Junior Johnson, uh, I had seen in Boston, he recognized me and called and said, he, you know, call me by both my names. And then to uh, get a telephone call from Gatemouth Brown agreeing that he would come down to help do a benefit for one of the locals, Pete Mays, one of the guys who live here, one of the recording people that live here, blues guitarist Pete Mays. But Gatemouth Brown's voice on the other end of the phone saying, hey man, what's going on, what you got going down there? That's pretty much of a thrill for me uh, to just for him to call Houston to talk to anybody himself is a big deal, but for him to call Houston to talk to me, that's probably a bigger deal. The most memorable time in my career is when I played with Big Mama Thornton in 1982, when she came to the 19th of Jews Blues Festival. And she says, the band has just got through playing. Tell that guitar player to step out here and give me some guitar. And I tell you what, it was a rockin' day that day, 19th of June, 1982. Mm -hmm.